Okay, let's start. Welcome everyone. Glad to welcome you in our EU China online industry workshop today. Um, I'm happy, we, everyone from GNSS Asia is happy that you took time out of your busy schedule to attend this webinar. Uh, and we promise we're gonna deliver very interesting new and relevant insights to you um, of the Chinese GNSS market from our um, colleagues in China, our ears and eyes in the GNSS community, um, which will be happy to first present and then afterwards um, uh, answer all your questions you might have. Um, before we start, a quick Zoom crash course. Um, please mute your microphone. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. Um, feel free to upvote. Um, and do so from the beginning. We will answer all your questions at the end of the, of the session. Um, and also feel free to talk to um, panelists or fellow participants. So the highlights of today will include um, many new infos on the GNSS market, ranging from um, how China is differing in its market segmentation over um, high precision of smart vehicles that we see, um, new players going upstream and um, sensor fusion in many different areas, which we'll discuss in, in detail. So the agenda for today will start with a few welcome remarks by our global coordinator, Rainer Horn. Um, followed by an overview of the market by our colleague Tian Tian Chi um, and the latest market and technology trends by our colleague Devil Xu. Um, and also at the end, we will um, present some opportunities for EU industry for you, followed by the Q&A session. Um, so I'm glad to give the floor now to our global coordinator, Rainer Horn. Rainer, it's your floor. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining. Ni hao also to my colleagues in China. Um, very happy to organize this webinar with you together and to see you at least virtually. Uh, this is not a normal mode of operation for everybody, uh, but since we build a closely knit network across Asia and Europe for GNSS, um, we will continue the networking this way. So I'd like to welcome all, in particular the industry from Europe and the partners in in China to have this current exchange on the topic. A quick introduction about GNSS Asia for those who are new to us. We have been active since the beginning of 2012. We're working with the European GNSS ecosystem, uh, helping to facilitate industrial cooperation for industry, support institutional relations um, for the European Commission and the European GNSS Agency, and we're promoting the European GNSS in the multi-GNSS context, working together with partners and other constellations and uh, augmented um, augmentation uh, systems in the respective countries. Next slide, please. So you see us normally in action with uh, one or two or three events per country. Here are a few pictures of from the last years at conference that we organized with our partners, GLAC or the big exhibition that we we're going to be talking about, the latest release today, where our Chinese colleagues attended. And uh, also there will be lateral exchanges of Chinese delegations welcomed in European ministries somewhere here in Czech Republic on the top right, for example. So GNSS Asia can do for you a number of services, most of them free of charge until our capacity is exhausted. So we help you with networking, matchmaking support. We help you doing personalized interviews, making sure you have the right introductions that you know whom you're talking to. Um, we help you market your products through newsletters, through promotion material, virtual presentations, speaking slots at online or offline workshops. And we help you with tailored market entry support. So some companies which um, are accredited, so to speak, by GNSS Asia, that we say, look, you have the right context in your company, the right ambitions. We will then spend extra time and resources and help you in your business development in those markets in a combination 
of the European team, Julia, Hannes, Alistair, myself, and on the Chinese side, in this case, uh, Tian Tian and Davov. So and here they are, our colleagues. So maybe you introduce yourself, Tian Tian and Davov. Good morning, Europe. This is Tian Tian Xi speaking. Tian Tian, myself, have 14 years experience in the EU delegation to China and Mongolia before I joined the European Union Chamber of Commerce in China, based in Shanghai. I am the Genius Asia China project manager, and also in parallel, I'm the senior business manager at the European Chamber. I'm leading auto components working group. I love Belgian food and French wines. Nice to meet you all today with this opportunity. That will floor yours. Hello, everyone. My name is Da Wolf Xu. Uh, I have worked for five years uh, at the European Chamber of, of Commerce to China on GNS Asia project. So, so I, I'm also your old friends, maybe also old face for, for you. And also I'm working on the U, uh, US Me Center project, which helped uh, uh, European uh, small media enterprise to get ready to Chinese market. And uh, in the past three years, I'm working as standardization council at Philips. And also part-time I work as national vice chair of Standard and Conformity Assessment Working Group at uh, European Chamber. Uh, I love uh, teas and jam beers. <laughs> that's all, thank you. Okay, that's great. Loving European food and wine and beer is always a good thing. So let's see what our agenda has to offer. Uh, we will continue with uh, the presentation of uh, Tian Tian Shi uh, for the overview of the, of the Chinese GNSS market landscape. Tian Tian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Julia and Reiner. You must be surprised, the pandas. Davov and I were in Chengdu participating the China Satellite Navigation Conference last week. That's where the panda was located. We have the chance opportunity to, to visit the pandas. And also the China Satellite Navigation Conference identified by ICG as one of the three major international academic conferences on satellite navigation is hosted by the China National Satellite Navigation System Management Office and the Ministry of Science and Technology and other nine co-organizers. But due to COVID, the conference extended from May to November with more than 3,000 participants. Next slide, please. My colleague loved the panda. <laughs> so the aim of the conference is to strengthen academic innovation, to promote cooperation and communication of satellite navigation system, to promote engineering construction of satellite navigation system, and also promote theoretical and scientific progress of satellite navigation through a series of activities such as academic exchanges, high-end forums and exhibitions, and the conference comprehensively displayed the latest achievements in the field of satellite navigation. We would like to share with you three takeaways from the conference of last week. The first is there's an urge to establish a GNSS basic law to safeguard the Chinese GNSS market development and strengthen its security to risk assess the weakest link for its internationalization. At present, China lacks relevant legal protection and supervision management. Satellite navigation system urgently needs to compensate the weakness of the rule of law and actively build a sound satellite navigation legal system. The regulations on the set navigation should be issued as soon as possible from the industry. The regulations have been included in the legislative work plan of the State Council in 2016 and are administrative regulations to fill in the legislative gap in the construction of Beidou system to regulate the management system, construction, operation, and maintenance, safety, and security, application promotion, as well as international cooperation. The second takeaway, the China Satellite Navigation System Administration Office and Mongolia Geographic Information Association has held a cer signing ceremony for the bilateral cooperation agreement between China and Mongolia. The two sides will continue to train Chinese and Mongolian professors in the field of navigation and position application and provide scientific and technological network, industry bases, and talent support for the cooperation development. The last one, is the latest generation of 22 nano dual frequency position chips, 
which was officially launched in Chengdu last week. Meituan, an e-commerce platform, and BD Star signed a strategic cooperation agreement to set up a special joint lab to develop high-precision multi-source fusion precision algorithm for unmanned delivery and automated driving, forming a system-level solution to jointly promote the technical development and application of unmanned delivery vehicles and also automated driving. That's the three takeaway from the conference. Next slide, please. As you see from this chart, I'm going to give you an overview of the Chinese market of 2019. In 2019, the total output value of China satellite navigation and location service industry reaches 43 billion euro, an increase of 40.4% compared to 2018. The core output value of the industry, which is directly related to the development and application of satellite navigation technology, including chips, device, algorithm, software, navigation data, terminal equipment, and infrastructure, increased by 9% year on year to 40.6 billion euro, accounting for 34% of the total output value. With the deep with the in-deep advancement of the application of GNSS, the associated output value formed by satellite navigation industry reaches 28.7 billion euro, a year-on-year -year increase of 70%, which strongly supported by the further improvement of the industry's overall economic benefit. At present, the number of companies still were in at present, the number of companies in the field of satellite navigation and location services in China remains about 40,000, and the number of employees exceed 500,000. As of the end of 2019, the total number of industry-related stock listed mark companies are 46, and the related output value of listed companies involving satellite navigation and location service accounted for about 9%. Of the national total output value. And also, worth to mention, in 2019, if you see the chart at the bottom, the market revenue stabilized with the relative output value of the upstream and midstream of the industry chain still showing a downward trend, accounting for 99% and 45.9% in the trend by value. Also, the downstream operation and maintenance service experienced the fastest increase in the benefit in the industry chain. The proportion of downstream output value has increased to 44%. Next slide, please. I'm showing you the GNS market segment in Europe, which you're quite familiar with. And then I'm going to show you the Chinese segment. Next slide, please. Here, you must be, wow, there are so many applications. So we're just showing you the GNS market segments in China, which covers industrial market, mass market, as well as specific market. We're going to highlight to you five sectors. Next slide, please. You can see from this one, the European segments is highlighted in the China segments. And for the next slides, where we highlighted in yellow, the sharing economy, the medical service, the special education, the tourism, as well as the sports are the sectors we're going to show you with the next slides with pictures. So the application market of major industry in China satellite navigation sector has maintained steady development throughout 2019, with organizations such as the Ministry of Transportation continuing to promote the application of Chinese satellites in the transportation industry. The trend continued in agriculture as well as for the transportation. As we're showing you now, the shared bike and also shared charging station are belonging to the sharing economy, as well as ambulance management, patient monitoring, civil economy belongs to the medical services, special education, which covers uh, blind man navigation. For tourism, these I would like to share with you something. It is because the application of the GNSS or location-based service on the tourism has helped you to reserve the tickets and also see the flow of the people during the COVID pandemic in China to make sure that people keep social distancing while they still can enjoy the life when the pandemic happens in China. And also after uh, March, the pandemic has been under control for a little while. As well, you see sports sector, where you can see the outdoor activities, running, changek, and also raising boat positioning is used in China. The picture gives you a snapshot of where it has been used in the sectors in the China people's daily life. 
Next slide, please. We're showing you also some key stakeholders in the important segments. So as you can see, and also later, my colleague Davov will give that deep dive into you for the market trends and, so, and also technology trends. We have divided the players into upstream, midstream, and downstream, as well as location-based service, transport, maritime, agriculture, as well as railway. Next slide, please. Those are the companies in colored, which we would like to bring to your attention. For example, Hua Create and also Mengxing Technology and BD Star, as well as Ali Star. You may be familiar with the name, as well as Baidu. Those are the players that we would like to bring to your attention. And most importantly, not forget about CETC 54. Those are the players. Later on, my colleague will also deep dive into and introduce you what is their operation also um, practice in China. Next slide, please. So these slides I'm going to show you, there are five major regions reported in the GLOC report. As of the end of 2019, the five major regions in the, is the Per River Delta, Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, Yangtze River Delta, Central China, and Western China. So for Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, for Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, in 2019, the region was promoting autonomous vehicle driving and Genesis Plus. As of 16th December, the number of 5G subscrib subscribers have reached 251,000 and 4,577 5G base stations has been opened. With basic coverage of indoor and outdoor 5G signal inside and precise coverage outside the fifth ring road, Beijing have six ring roads, so it basically means it's mostly covered, the people living in Beijing area. In the field of automated driving, 151 automated driving test road has been opened in the Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei region, with a total length of 500 kilometers, the length of which is longest in China. All test vehicles has been fitted with positioning and sensing devices based on satellite navigation technology. And I'm going to dive into the top one of uh, the five regions that I just mentioned, is the Yangtze River Delta. The Yangtze River Delta continue to promote high-end and innovative developments in manufacturing. The comprehensive output value of the regional satellite navigation and location basis industry reaches 9.4 billion euro, accounting for 22% of the country, an increase of 784 million euro from 2018, a gross rate of 9%. The output value of the Per River Delta region ranks first among the five regions. And in 2019, the Per River Delta region continues to promote the development of high-end and innovative production and manufacturing. The outline of the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Great Bay Area Development Plan proposed to leverage in, on the resources and foundations of central cities such as Hong Kong, Macau, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen to nurture and expand strategic emerging industry and to foster a number of major industrial projects in key areas such as GNS satellite applications. To promote the smooth implementation to the outline, Guangdong province invested more than 1.5 million euro in the sector. And also first to mention, in August 2019, the State Council made the important decision to establish the China Guangxi Pilot Freight Trade Zone, proposing to build a pilot demonstration zone for Asian cooperation. The last region I'm going to introduce you is where I'm based in Shanghai, belonging to the Pearl River Delta. Sorry, Shanghai belongs to the Yangtze River Delta. The Yangtze River Delta plans to build a spatial temporary information network and high precision special temporary data center, forming cloud service capacities and a multi-industry smart plus application service platform and taking the lead in the demonstration zone to establish the world's leading innovation pilot zone for high precision, low cost mass market, comprehensive cross-region and cross-industry integrated pilot. And what does the Yangtze River Delta region has in number. The Yangtze River Delta 
region reaches 6 billion euro, as you can see from the slides, while the central China reaches 4.4 euro billion, sorry, central China reaches 4.4 billion euro, and the last region is the Western China. The Western region reaches 3.6 billion euro. As you can see, the five regions, China is developing its industry by the regions as a joint effort. That's basically from my side of the overview side. And now I would like to welcome Julia to be back. Thank you, uh, Tian Tian, for this very insightful presentation. Um, I'm happy to give the floor now to Davov for the latest market and technology trends. Please also for the audience, please feel free to um, ask your first questions and put them in the chat. Uh, we'll be happy to, to answer them later on. Okay, Dawa, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julian. Uh, uh, hello again. So my presentation uh, today, we are include three parts. Uh, they are respective latest GNSS market trends and GNSS technology trends, as well as I will give you an overview on the regulatory landscape overview in China. Uh, our GNSS Asia China team has prioritized GNSS uh, application sectors in China. And the, in the first sector, I will give you a debriefing on five uh, critical key segments of GNSS application market in China and its development trends. Uh, they are consumer solutions, road automotive, maritime, rail, and agriculture. So uh, the first uh, sector, I will introduce the consumer solutions best benefits from the fast development of Chinese smart mobile phone, e-commerce uh, e companies, as well as the IT companies. The location-based service application of GNSS enjoy broad prospects. The location-based navigation service and solutions has been widely adopted by e-commerce companies, manufacturers of intelligent mobile phone terminals, Huawei, ZTE, etc. Uh, the service has been has intensive entered into the fields of mass consumption, share economics and those related to people's life foods. According to the data from Ministry of In Industry and uh, Information of China, the output of smartphone in 2019 is uh, three, 390 million. And uh, the number of 5G mobile phones was almost uh, 40, uh, 14 million. And uh, the MIT expect that the output of 5G mobile phone will reach 180 million by, by the end of this year. Uh, and uh, as for the smart portable device, a variety of GNSS enabled smart wearable device such as watches and cards, are uh, imaging in social service and caring for wearable groups. And uh, at least, uh, and this has have already been used widely by students, seniors, and many others since the aging problems in China. In the field of e-commerce, logistics trucks and delivery personals of man, uh, many e-commerce companies in China, such as Alibaba, Jingdong, Pinduoduo, are using GNSS-based vehicle bones and also hunt head terminals to dispatch vehicles, delivery men and goods at real time. Okay. Uh, set, uh, this year, uh, as my colleague mentioned, uh, also the world is suffering from the COVID-19 and the impacts are still existing with us. After the outbreak of COVID-19 in China, the government has uh, come up a lot of different solutions from different perspectives with different technologies. And the GNSS, of course, uh, is very important, uh, plays an important role in uh, controlling the uh, sources of infection and the cutting off 
the channels of transmission of COVID-19. Uh, in China, we use this a lot of uh, uh, GNSS-based solutions with everyone. And uh, everyone in China can register a uh, has QR code with uh, mini apps through WeChat uh, from Tencent, Alipay from Alibaba, uh, which link to health data with color code. Basically, they are three, three colors. Uh, they are green, green, uh, yellow, and red. Uh, green, green colors means that uh, someone is healthy without contacting with patients of COVID-19 or without going to high risk areas. Uh, if it's red, it means that it might be potential uh, at high risk areas. So people are required to, to show the green code when ent ent entering uh, public areas or when taking trains or taking flights. Uh, these measures are still used by Chinese government to control the epidemic spread. And uh, the outcome turns out that it's quite successful in China. So that's a reason we, I can have the chance to see my colleague uh, Tian Tian in the same office today. And uh, we also have a deep uh, analysis on the uh, GNSS-based solutions for uh, COVID-19. So if you are interested, you are also welcome to uh, contact us and we, we are also feel free to uh, provide more insights for you. And uh, here is an example of smart uh, portable device for preventing missing children, uh, school bullying, uh, child sexual assault, or other violent injuries. Uh, the solution platform named with Child Safety Emergency Response Platform, which you can see on the slide. Uh, this slide is developed by uh, the famous uh, company, now in four, uh, I also registered uh, the membership in this platform. So when I or someone uh, saw uh, see a missing kid on the street or in a public place, I or the person can report uh, on the platform and uh, inform all the members, and all the members uh, can receive alerts and uh, provide. Uh, what they have, what they know, and the relevant info, information to the police through this platform. Uh, as mentioned in previous slide on the GNSS for preventing the transmission of COVID-19, non-contact delivery has become more and more popular solutions in China. So delivery companies are forced uh, to have uh, to adopt new solutions for surviving in such uh, intense uh, time, which also creates new opportunities for delivery companies, and also it, bright, uh, it brings new opportunities for GNSS supply chain. Uh, here is a video that shows how the driverless car for delivery of medicine during intense time of COVID-19 in China.
we move to next segment. Uh, uh, so uh, the, uh, I will jump into the load trans, uh, transportation uh, applications, uh, uh, GNSS applications on load map, load transportations. Load transportation is another very important domain for China uh, GNSS market. With the fast development of intelligent connected vehicles in China, GNSS enabled or GNSS integrated with other sensors or other technology applications and solutions getting booming in China. Uh, GNSS has also been used, widely used in the monitoring and management of priority transportation, uh, highway infrastructure safety, port scheduling, and real time high position positioning. Uh, by the end of 2019, more than uh, 6.5 million uh, road operating vehicles, uh, 40,000 postal and express delivery vehicles, 80,000 buses, uh, 3.2 thousand inland navigation facilities uh, has adopted GNSS, which forms uh, the world's largest dynamic monitoring system for the road operating vehicles. Uh, GNSS-based solutions also brings the possibilities. I, I will also say it will all, it also bring a bright future for automotive driving and vehicles to everything solutions. We have seen many examples, uh, successful examples now nowadays in China. Uh, as you can see uh, in the below pictures, uh, there are some uh, testing examples, load trials for autopilots, smart trucks with autopilots, which has achieved level four autopilot, uh, can do pre precise stopping parking and close uh, cleaning based on GNSS solutions and the ground-based augmentation system. And uh, last but not least, the Baidu Apro automotive driving solutions, which, uh, as we all know that high precision maps plays a very important role in vehicle precision and high precision, uh, precision positioning, uh, which helping to achieve the autopilot. Baidu, uh, the top search engine IT companies in China, which is similar as Google in the States, has invested a large amount of capital into its own mapping companies and developed uh, is its own location-based solutions for long wire. Uh, benefits from its mapping business, Baidu now is become uh, the leading companies in providing smart vehicle solutions for autopilots in China. As you can see, the auto Apro in this slide uh, is a really ambitious name. Uh, shows that the ambitions from Baidu on the automotive driving uh, for automotive driving is a software platform released by Baidu to provide high accuracy solutions for automotive driving. The pictures the in this slide shows that Baidu uh, testing driving in Beijing. Uh, this year, Baidu Apro announced the official launch of self-driving tax service in China and becoming the first automotive driving service open to the public through a mobile phone applications. You... Yeah, so users can uh, access uh, this service through Baidu app by, uh, to enter the taxi driver or search uh, taxi in the Baidu app uh, through the mobile phone. Uh, with one, uh, so you can see this video, uh, which shows the experience of self-driving taxi service in Changsha. Hey, so now we're inside a robo taxi. And let me scan the QR code. Okay, so we're good to go. Now we can click start a journey. 
Okay, you can see the car is driving by itself right now. So this is the speed limit that we can see here is 30. 30 kilometers per hour and this is the speed right now which is like 27 25 and now it's about to make a right turn so the safety operator's hands were off the steering wheel the whole time as you can see the car is about to make a U-turn. Quite amazing to look at the steering wheel move by itself. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, as you can also see uh, that uh, uh, in previous video, uh, that uh, the delivery for medicines is also provided uh, by Apple. Uh, so uh, I will move to jump into uh, maritime uh, navigation. Uh, in the field of maritime applications, GNSS provides service for ship uh, positioning and monitoring, emergency recce information release, and also fishing vessels management. Since the unique uh, short message functions of Beidou system, uh, the short message has become one of most important applications for maritime navigation in China. And it also became a Chinese ecosystem for fishery with the help of the GNSS-based uh, maritime applications. Uh, more than 10,000 lives has been saved in 2019. Since the importance of GNSS in maritime applications, GNSS application for maritime becomes uh, one of first industries where Chinese government set policies to require to install the GNSS enabled terminals so as to save uh, lives and uh, guard fishery economics. In 2019, uh, GNSS enabled terminals have been installed by more than 7,000 fishery boats and law enforcement vessels across China. There is also an example uh, of the GNSS applications in Shanghai port. Shanghai port has uh, achieved full coverage of uh, Beidou telemetry for public trunk beacons. In addition, uh, the Beidou short message function can be used to monitor the real-time position, uh, light quality, and battery efficiency of all beacons in the waters in Shanghai port area. Uh, GNSS also has been used widely in the fields of agriculture, fisher, uh, forestry, and uh, fishery, which has covered a whole chain of farming in China. 
uh, GNSS-based uh, automatic driving systems has been equipped on more than 2,000, uh, 20,000 sets of agricultural machinery and equipment. And the GNSS-based agricultural machinery operation supervision platforms and IoT platforms provide service for more than 100,000 sets of agricultural machinery, uh, machinery equipment. Uh, you, we also have a we, uh, uh, we have examples in in Inner Mongolia. The government has installed a grassland intelligence monitoring system for herd, herders free of charge. Sheep and cattle are fit with colors based on GNSS. And we also have a video that shows the uh, GNSS based uh, so, uh, solutions for jump uh, for. Uh, for spring farming in Inno Mongolia. So uh, uh, along with the intelligent uh, upgrading of China high speed speed railways and high uh, high speed rail transportation, as well as innovative application and developments of satellite navigation and positioning technology in the field of engineering construction, GNSS has used in the smart uh, railway applications and the smart construction applications. Uh, together with the fast expanding of 5G constructions uh, uh, in China, according to the data from China Mobile Phone, uh, China Mobile from the China Satellite Navigation Conference, they are uh, more than 600,000 uh, 600, of 5G stations has have been established around China. The integration of GNSS and 5G positioning, navigation, and timing solutions make the operation of uh, high-speed train and uh, railway running very safely and smoothly, and especially the uh, Huxing trains with the top speed of uh, 350 kilometers per hour. The solutions uh, and technologies has been also used in Beijing uh, Zhangjiakou uh, High Speed Railway for uh, Winter Olympic Games in 2022. Uh, with the help of uh, GNSS, GNSS and 5G technology, the, uh, the, the uh, high speed trains can, uh, can achieve the automatic driving for the first time in the world. And the train can uh, re achieve automatic operation and automatic stops. Last, uh, it's also very interesting to see that GNSS technologies have also been used in the China Europe Express trains. GNSS checkers has, have been placed on the containers on the China Europe uh, Express trains so that the cargo owners can check the operations of the China Europe trains at any time on their mobile phones. Last but not least, GNSS also has been used in the construction uh, uh, in real time monitoring of cold trains logistics by railway and uh, uh, unifying the railway system clocks, etc. Uh, satellite navigation is an important area for development of strategic imaging industries. So in this part, I will give you an overview on the GNSS technology trends. Impacted by SpaceX, the dominance of the state-owned enterprise in upstream sector of space 
industry has gradually changed nowadays. A lot of new industry companies has start into <coughs> start to enter into the upstream sector in China, such as lens lens space, link space, and X space. The opening up of the space sectors also boost the development of GNSS integrates with other satellite systems, which driven by a uh, commercial interest from the industry as well as the interests from the political sides. Uh, China has the ambitions to set up a GNSS integrating with SETCOM constellation uh, system since many years ago. The plan called uh, Hongyan constellation systems, which you can see in the picture, uh, is uh, similar as Iridium constellations in, in the States. Hongyan is the constellation uh, of more than three 300 low orbit satellite task, task with providing global communication service. And you will also task to augment the functions of GNSS service. Uh, the verification projects has, have been run in the past few years, but there are no much information uh, on, the state, uh, on the status from, uh, in the market. And uh, however, according to the latest news we got from CETC 54, the institutions who is running the demonstration project for Hongyan. Two verification satellites uh, uh, have been launched and also uh, two ground stations and also over 10 ground augmentation uh, verification device has been developed to test uh, the functions to support augmentation of navigation signals and messages. It has been observed that GNSS has been integrated with uh, telecom satellites for industry applications. One of top leading GNSS company, Huaquit, has launched two mobile phone telecom satellites called Tiangong. Uh, this, the Tiangong satellite has been used widely for vessels. Another interesting players from uh, automotive industry, Gili, uh, has established uh, companies on space and they are planning to launch uh, two LEO satellites to serve uh, its automatic, uh, automated driving business and expanding their future business in smart driving. Same as Europe, China also has quite a broad application of GNSS integrating with remote, remote sensing satellites. In China, the combination application of GNSS and remote sensing has been widely used in city constructions with digital twins technology. Can you move to the next slide? Uh, besides the integration in the upstream, uh, we also observed that GNSS technology have been integrated with all kinds of new technologies for improving a better positioning and uh, uh, navigation service. With the arrival, uh, arrival of 5G commercial era, GNSS is accelerating the integrations with new technologies the GNSS systems can unify the timing of 5G stations and 5G integrates with traditional positioning, navigation and timing solutions will be also great in, uh, significance to improve the navigation and the positioning performance and provide a, a, a similar and integrate location service infrastructure, infrastructure based on 5G uh, with full air sp uh, airspace, full time domains, and full frequency domains with uh, high precision, high reliability, high availability of uh, functions. Uh, three, mobile, three mobile operators, uh, China Mobile, China Unicore, and China Telecom, has also established a broad 5G networks in China, as mentioned above. 
uh, and they are also use their advantage in their mobile phone networks to de develop GNSS integrate with 5G solutions for smart vehicles, which can solve the problems in all environments for automotive driving, such as in the in in dense uh, urban areas or in the tunnels. The combination of GNSS and 5G uh, technologies can provide better service for indoor and outdoor navigations. In that sense, China has proposed uh, the 5G, the 5G communications uh, co-bound position methods in the three GPP standards, which has been released. Uh, it's also worth to mention that before the China Satellite Navigation Conference, China Mobile also launched the uh, one point solutions where we recently, uh, the solution is based on MBIoT plus 4G plus 5G uh, for automotive driving. And it also was to mention that the solutions is supporting uh, Galileo. As mentioned uh, in last slide, the digital twins has been applied for the solution of GNSS and remote sensing. Uh, Shanghai Huache Navigation has used uh, the technology to develop uh, real digital Shanghai city models with real size of roads and constructions and the buildings for Shanghai government so that the government can uh, can plan the can make the plans for uh, city constructions for the future. To conclude this slide, the integration of GNSS and other technologies will be uh, future trends in China. Next, yeah. Benefits from the fast development of GNSS systems. A lot of GNSS uh, enabled new economics. Uh, business models and markets has boomed up in China. As mentioned in previous slides, GNSS is accelerating the integrations with new technologies. And also uh, IT companies uh, and also uh, offline, online to offline companies has competing in investing in mapping companies and uh, expanding their business in applications of uh, GNSS in China, such as Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, which uh, these are three uh, dry, uh, big leading dry, giant IT companies in China. And thanks to the largest uh, consumptions of smartphone and uh, people's spending a lot of time on mobile phones, which has brought, uh, brought a golden age for GNSS companies uh, in China. Many companies such as uh, um, bike, share, uh, bike sharing companies, Mobike, and also taxi hiring company, DD, has uh, become leading companies in a very short time. Uh, only one hand, the rapid uh, development of GNSS industries puts forward the requirements on the policy. On the other hand, the policy also boosts the GNSS industry development. The Chinese government attach great importance uh, importance to uh, accelerate the legislations in the field of the satellite uh, navigations, which my colleagues Tian mentioned uh, in the previous slides. Next slide, please. So, uh, in order to safeguard, safeguard the healthy, rapid, and sustainable development of satellite navigation industry in China, in the past few years, uh, China, China, Chinese government has released almost 1,000 rules, regulations, and policies to regulate the uh, industry developments and also promotes the development of GNSS industries. 
Uh, in some areas, uh, Chinese government try to set policies to require uh, the uh, required the, the sectors to have required the sectors to install the GNSS terminals, such as dangerous schools vehicles, taxis, driving school vehicles, and public public security uh, terminals, and also maritime vessels, and there are also many, many, uh, many other uh, re legislation plans are in the pipelines. Uh, think about it. China is still a copycat country in the world. No, <laughs> uh, I would say no. Uh, China has becoming the game leader in the global innovation games by means of standardization activities and the patent registrations in the world. Myself, as a standardization counsel at a global innovation company, uh, Philips, in addition, as a national vice chair of standard and conformity assessment working group uh, at European Union Chambers to China, we have seen the game rules has have been changed a lot in China. As a European company running business in China, we are still keeping advocating the Chinese government. And uh, if any of you, if you are interested to join us as a union to make sure the business environment is becoming better for European countries, please feel free to uh, contact me and uh, uh, offline. So from, uh, come back to the, this, this point, uh, from standardization and regulatory perspective, the National Technical Committee on Satellite Navigation has been established uh, last year and uh, more than 50 specific standards on satellite navigation have been released in 2019 and uh, just in the past few days, another 20 standards on satellite navigation have been released. From the patent uh, filing on GNSS, domestic applicants of satellite navigation patents have increased rapidly. And you can see the numbers. Uh, the number uh, has increased almost 10 times in the past 10 years from 2000. 10 to 2019. And I'm sure that you will increase more in the uh, in coming years. And of course, China's strategy for GNS will, GNSS will not be limited to domestic market. The Chinese government together with the industry players such as Huawei, BD Star, uh, are very active in international standards bodies and uh, other international organizations. In order to make sure the adoptions of uh, Beidou by international standardization bodies, China has been devoted uh, a lot of efforts in, in, this, in these standardization uh, activities, uh, standardization bodies such as ICAO, IMO, 3GPPP, uh, IEC, et cetera. And it's worth to mention that uh, in the uh, R16 version of 3GPP standards, the, uh, for 5G, uh, the 5G standards supporting the Beidou, uh, Beidou B1C signals has been approved and released in 2020. Uh, from the application level, the opening up of uh, GNSS market in China will not be oh, not will be not only challenge for European companies, I would say, but uh, from my point of view, it will be also opportunities for European companies since the policy has been changed uh, and the, the environment has been changed, and we need European companies to more engaged in this in these games with Chinese government. Thank you. That's my presentation. Thank you, Davov. Uh, that was quite impressive. Um, 
at least from my point of view, that was a lot of information from both of you and, and very interesting insights. Um, I'm happy to present our eight key takeaways from this session, just as a quick wrap up um, to remember what we've talked about. Um, we saw at the beginning that uh, market segmentation differs considerably between Europe and China, which is interesting to see in which areas they actually uh, differentiate. Then we saw that the gravity point of the GNSS industry in uh, China is the Pearl River Delta. Um, Tianjin elaborated on that, also very interesting to see. Uh, thirdly, we saw that consumer solutions have penetrated into almost every part of Chinese citizens' lives, um, especially or also for uh, anti-COVID applications. Um, we also saw, fourthly, that um, the high precision of smart vehicles um, is advancing with the prominent example of Apollo self-driving taxis, which we saw the video of. Um, also very impressive uh, to see. Um, we saw also that new players are going upstream. Um, we saw that there's a lot of sensor fusion, um, for example, for remote sensing, mobile communication, and AI. Um, there are also new business models coming up um, and new and high-tech infrastructure. Um, and finally, last but not least, we saw that there is growing legislation, regulation, and standardization in the GNSS market. That's how uh, China is promoting the GNSS industry um, locally. Um, so I think these are eight very um, important insights and key takeaways. Um, but we also want to um, combine them with what we think is relevant for European industry and what opportunities we can take out of these insights uh, for European industry. And that's what, we, what we're gonna do now. Um, I think we can learn from what was presented now that um, there are predominantly opportunities in the automotive sector, um, especially for chipsets with high accuracy um, and robustness or for producers of models with, uh, with signal authentication. We have seen some success uh, cases there already, and this is mainly driven by um, China's urban transportation challenges, which fuel smart mobility and intelligent transport systems. Same goes for the agriculture sector. Um, we see there also big opportunities for application developers and high accur accuracy sh chipsets, um, especially for smart agriculture and precision farming. Um, as mentioned already, the consumer solutions market is a really open market for European um, stakeholders or a relatively open market. Um, and we see there opportunities for EU solution providers and application um, developers. Um, in maritime, um, also there is a growing market and di digital transformation that we see. Um, again, opportunities for chipset receivers and terminal producers. Um, also some success stories we have there from European industry um, going into that market. Finally, um, considering rail, um, which was also discussed, uh, and I think there are already some questions um, uh, in that sector. Uh, so we can see there, um, especially high-speed railroad systems um, are a great opportunity for GNSS enabled digitalization. Um, and we're happy to discuss this more. So thanks again for all the information and for this quick wrap up. Wrap up. Um, let's now move um, on to the Q&A session. Um, let's see. Um, okay, um, there are two questions from our audience. I see they took me by word when I said uh, they're invited to ask challenging questions to our team. Um, one is from Simon Litvinov. Um, I will read it out as probably addressed to you, Davov. Um, yeah. He would like to know if you could talk more about GNSS 
uh, usage in high speed trains, um, especially concerning what technology is used there. Um, and it would be interesting to know um, for cases where um, it's over 300 kilometers per hour. Um, do you have any insights there? Uh, um, so, so you, uh, I, I should answer the question one by one, or you, uh, just uh, answer this first and uh, this and uh, next one. Uh, you, you can answer. I propose you answer that first. Yeah, okay. We can move on to the next question. So basically, uh, this uh, GNSS RTK and RTK and PPP RTK. Uh, all has been used in China, uh, in China uh, solutions has been used in China. Uh, but for this, uh, for the, there are different uh, specific scenarios and different uh, uh, rail lines. So for this one, for the Fuxing, uh, for the Fuxing I just mentioned, uh, for the Beijing to Zhangjiakou uh, railway, it has been used the GNS as uh, RTK, uh, no, this uh, PPP RTK for 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 the for for that for that line. But the, I, as far as I know, there are also other solution. Uh, GNS as RTK and NRTK has also been used in other lines. Okay, okay, thank you for that. If there are any follow up questions on that, feel free to ask them in the chat and we, we might ask them again. Okay, the next question, Davov, probably also for you, is from Thomas Nick. He would like to know uh, to what extent is functional safety a requirement for GNSS in highly automated driving? Uh, in, maybe can I get my uh, So basically, they are. Uh, Currently, is still testing. Yeah, testing. Is still testing uh, uh, period for for the automatic, automatic driving, mm -hmm. and uh, as far as I know, that uh, so far the uh, things is uh, the requirement for China is uh, is a bit different. For all the st international standards should be localized into GB standards and also. Internet, uh, or industry standards so that uh, can apply it for China market. So for the international market, you can use the uh, ISO standards, but for China, uh, uh, the, these standards hasn't been uh, localized into GB standards or into industry standards yet. So it still needs time to uh, regulate uh, the safety uh, function safety for automotive driving in China. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I see no more questions. Um, if any questions should come up from the audience side, uh, maybe even after the webinar, feel free to contact us and ask the questions. We, we are happy to, to look into it and, and get back to you. Uh, um, yeah, sure. Sure, yeah. So thanks again, Dava, for, for answering uh, knowledge, knowledgeably all the questions. Um, we come into the phase of finalizing our, our webinar. Uh, thanks again for attending. Just a few uh, announcements from the GNSS Asia side. We have some interesting um, events coming up next year. In January, we have a webinar uh, on GNSS for UTM solutions in, in Taiwan. We see a lot of uh, development in the in the drone market and would like to present it uh, to you as well. In March, we will have uh, a EU Asian uh, workshop on space data for emergency and maritime solutions. And in spring, uh, we'll organize uh, EU GNSS technology days um, for all Asia and European um, audience. Um, and Last but not least, we'll also soon uh, publish our new market and technology trend, where a lot of these insights just presented to you will be um, well published in a written format in an in a insightful and detailed uh, report for you to check the information again and be up to date to all the latest and greatest from uh, GNSS markets, not just in China, but um, in all our different countries of uh, activity for GNSS Asia. 
Um, in general, please feel free to um, subscribe to our monthly newsletter uh, or feel, also feel free to register for our industry support. There's a lot we can do for you if you're interested in the Asian Pacific market. Um, and we're happy to support. As Rana said, most of it is free of charge and uh, registering will only take you um, two to five minutes. So it's really worth uh, worthwhile and, and uh, a good chance to do that. We also, um, on our website, we have country profiles for the GNSS market available that are easily accessible um, for you. And as already mentioned, our market and technology trends with, which will be published soon. Thank you again for your attention, for attending this webinar. I, I see we have uh, just as much participants at the end of the webinar as at the beginning. That's always a good sign that this has been interesting and relevant to you. Um, we thank you again, our whole team, and uh, you are invited to contact us anytime for further questions or comments or feedback on this webinar. Thanks a lot. Some final words from uh, our global coordinator or Chinese team? We would like to thank you, Julia, Hannah, and Rainer for organizing this session. And also, if any audience has any questions, please uh, any further questions on on the on our presentations, uh, please feel free to contact us. And uh, we would like to uh, uh, investigate or uh, the questions if we cannot answer. If we can answer them, we will be happy to to provide our insights on that. Yeah, we're happy to provide you with more insights in the Chinese market. So thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks for making it. And um, also, so you now see the, the people and more people than you normally see at an event. You see them live and acting, and you see how they can possibly help you with. We're happy to also organize one-to-one -one webinar calls or uh, video calls so that you can ask uh, questions that you send us before and, and we can answer them in more detail. So looking forward to interact with you. And first and foremost, uh, yeah, wish you a nice weekend. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank Bye, you. Bye. 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 Thank you.